Hey everyone, Kevin here. You know, your friend who has amnesia. I feel like I'm getting closer to graduation. I'm going and meeting with the principal. Hopefully I can take my test and graduate. Now I bet you're wondering why I'm here. Well, I'm waiting on my tutor, Tony. Where is that guy anyway? Mm -hmm. Whoa, hey, kid, what are you doing here? I've been waiting on you for hours. Really? Huh, sorry, I guess, I guess I forgot. Looks like maybe I got amnesia. Amnesia. That's what I said, amusha. Amnesia. Amne- Forget about it. Well, what are we doing here? All right, kid, today, oh, that's good. Today, I'm gonna teach you how to chew gum. I know how to chew gum. Okay, then, show me. There you go. Yo. Yeah, just take one day. What? Ooh. Okay, how was that? Terrible. Well, it was funny to watch, but here, let me show you how it's done. First, you don't eat just one stick. You put the whole thing in your mouth. That's why it comes in slices, like a pizza. Um, well, I guess that makes sense. Of course it does. Forget about it. Here, take the whole pack. Okay. Now, take off the wrappers and eat it all. Kind of hard to chew. How do I do? I do good, kid. Thanks for asking. No, it's hard to chew. Do I have the flu? Kid, I haven't been sick since 89. I, I can't yes. What happened? You were doing great. No, I'm done. I'm mad at the guy who threw the donut and gave me amnesia. He deserves amnesia, not me. Whoa, whoa, kid. Sounds like you haven't forgiven him yet. No, I haven't, and I never will. Look at me. I can't even chew a whole pack of gum at the same time. I know, it's hard, kid. Forgiving someone is probably one of the hardest things to do. How would you know? Hey, Tony's had to forgive lots of people. Like who? Like this one time, me and my little brother went to this Italian restaurant, and he got five shrimp on his spaghetti. I only got four. Totally unfair. So you forgave the waiter? No, I forgave the shrimp. Why'd they have to get on his plate, not mine? This isn't helping. Okay, listen, listen. I was just reading in my Bible today this really cool story about a thief that got forgiven. By who? Whom, Kevin. It's by whom. <sighs> okay, Tony, forgiven by whom? By Jesus. And this was when he was on the cross. Wow, you mean while he was dying he forgave someone? He did. And that's what the kids are going to learn about in the lesson today. Maybe you should listen. It might help you forgive your donut chunka. Well, sounds good to me. Let's go, kid. I can't. Why not? I, I can't. I sat in that giant gum wad from earlier and now I'm stuck. Oh, huh, really? Well, I guess that means I can go get another Slurpee. Good luck, kid. Wait, what? Bye! He became Mr. Forgot It All. Good morning boys and girls, this is Miss Cynthia. Thank you for joining me today. Um, today we were, we're going to continue on our series Never Forget and our story today is found in the book of uh, Luke chapter 23 verse 32 through 43. And so it takes place during uh, one of the saddest moments of Jesus' life. Um, Jesus had just spent three years of his entire life teaching and loving and helping others and so the problem is, or the problem was, that religious people um, in Jesus' day, they felt threatened by him. So they felt that he was making them look bad, and so they feared that people were going to stop following them and start following Jesus, and they feared that people would no longer listen to them, and um, they would stop doing whatever they told them to do. 
And so they, um, they paid one of Jesus' disciples, Judas, to betray Jesus. And for only like 30 pieces of silver, Judas led some of the soldiers to where Jesus was praying. And so they arrested Jesus and they put him on trial and they sentenced him to death on a cross. And so that's where we start a story today. Okay, we find Jesus at the beginning of the story and Jesus is nailed to the cross and he is hanging there between two thieves. And so these two thieves were guilty of many crimes, but Jesus was totally innocent. So suddenly, one of the thieves began to make fun of Jesus and he screamed, If you're king of the Jews, save yourself! And Jesus didn't respond. He said nothing. And suddenly, the other thief began to take up for Jesus. And he said, stop it. Don't you see? We are guilty. You and me, we're guilty. But he isn't. And then he looked directly at Jesus and he spoke to Jesus. And he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And you see, boys and girls, this man understood that Jesus was the son of God. He knew that Jesus was going to heaven and he wanted to honor Jesus with his very last breath. And so Jesus turned to the thief who had just honored him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. And so you may say to yourself, what? How could this man who was a sinner, who was a thief, who committed all of these crimes, how could he be with Jesus in paradise after everything that he did? And how, how could he go to Jesus with Jesus to paradise that day after dying? And so wasn't it too late for him? You might say to yourself, wasn't it too late for that guy, for that thief to be with Jesus in paradise? Wasn't it too late for him to be forgiven or for him to ask for forgiveness? But guess what? No, not at all. Today, boys and girls, never forget that it doesn't matter Absolutely, it doesn't matter how bad you are or how bad a person is. You're never too bad for Jesus to save. There's always hope. And so no matter who you are or what you've done, when Jesus is in your life, you can say, I am forgiven. So let's go over our power verse today, boys and girls. Okay, And it's in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. Do you know what repent means? It means to ask for forgiveness, to say I'm sorry, but to really mean it from the bottom of your heart. And so boys and girls, today we can learn some very important things from this thief. Okay, If you want to turn your life around, then follow the same steps that the thief took. And so number one, we have to admit that we are guilty, right? So this thief admitted that he was guilty of sin. In fact, we all are guilty. All of us are guilty of doing bad things, right? And so you say, but I really haven't done anything bad. I haven't robbed any banks or I haven't hurt anybody. And so, I mean, those things may be true. You might be a really good person, you know, but the Bible says, boys and girls, that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody, me, you, mom, dad, your teacher, your friends at school, everyone in this whole entire world falls short of the glory of God. Okay? And so the only way we can be saved is to admit that we have messed up, that we've done bad things, and that we've sinned. And so that's what the thief did. And that is what you and I must do, right? And so then the thief uh, turned to Jesus and he said, remember, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. So this man knew that he was guilty of sin. And so he turned to the only person that he knew could help him. And boys and girls, that's Jesus. Jesus was the only one who could take his sin away. And he took the second step. And so that the second step that we must take, if you want to turn our lives around, is to ask Jesus for help, okay? And when you're guilty of sin, which we all are, you must turn to Jesus. And Jesus is the only one who has never sinned. He is perfect. 
He is spot free. He is clean. He is white as snow. Never did he do anything wrong, right? He is perfect in every way. And so call out to Jesus, boys and girls, and say, Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I need you to forgive me. And I need you to forgive me of my sin and change my life, right? Jesus will hear you, boys and girls, just like he heard the thief on the cross, right? And so remember, boys and girls, that Jesus turned the thief, he turned to the thief and he said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Wow, boys and girls. The man called out to Jesus for help, for forgiveness, and Jesus answered him. And Jesus said, you will be with me in paradise. The thief admitted his sin and he asked Jesus for help. And then he took the third and final step. He received God's forgiveness, boys and girls. Each of us must receive God's forgiveness. When we do something, um, when we do something wrong, when we ask for forgiveness and we ask God to forgive us, something amazing happens, boys and girls. Boys and girls, this thief was just like most of us. He was a regular person. He was a real person, just like you and me. And his whole life, he had done things his own way. And he found himself full of sin and mess ups in his life. And so the Bible says, boys and girls, that sin is what keeps us from God. It keeps us separated. There's always something in between God and us that keeps us from getting closer to him. And that's sin, boys and girls. And so when he asked Jesus for forgiveness, he was instantly cleansed of his sin, boys and girls. And all the sin in his life disappeared. And his life was totally transformed in an instant. And even though... He spent his whole life running away from God and not listening to what God had to say to change his heart. It was never too late. It was never too late for him to turn his life around and turn his life over to Jesus and to be complete and forgiven. And so boys and girls, today I want you to never forget, boys and girls, it's never too late for anyone. It's never too late for you, for me, for our family members, for our friends. So do you know someone that needs Jesus in their lives, boys and girls? Do you need Jesus? And so it's never too late to admit our sin and to ask Jesus for help and to receive God's forgiveness. And if you will do that, then you can truly say that I am forgiven. Boys and girls, let's repeat our power verse for today, okay? The Lord does not want anyone to be destroyed, but he wants everyone to repent. Okay, so if he wants everyone to repent, that means that all of us have done something wrong, right? And we need to ask God to forgive us. And so that verse is found in 2 Peter 3, 9. And today, I want to show you something else, boys and girls. I want to show you just a quick illustration of what it means or what happens to us when God forgives us of our sins, okay? So I want you to take a look, and I'm going to show you, okay? Look, so this is our heart, right? And you can do this at home too. So you're gonna need a, a paper towel, right? And inside, you're gonna fold it in half. Inside, you're gonna draw a heart, right? Then you're gonna write the word sin. And then you're gonna fold it, right? And you're gonna kind of trace the heart over that. And so boys and girls, okay? So this is our heart. This is our heart. And when we sin, boys and girls, this is what happens, okay? So, this is all of our sin, right? All of our lies, our cheating, our bad attitudes, um, maybe sins that people can't see. Maybe uh, we're jealous or we're angry at someone and wishing them that something bad would happen to them. And boys and girls, see? This is what's inside our hearts. But sometimes this, this is how we want people to see us, right? We want to hide our sin, pretend like nobody knows what we did, and we hope that nobody saw or nobody um, heard what we said or saw what we did. And so this is how we want people to see us, right? And we want to walk around and pretend that we don't sin and we don't do anything wrong. But guess what, boys and girls? When you introduce Jesus into our lives, right? The water, clear water, that's Jesus. And so when we come to Jesus, he exposes our sin. 
he exposes our sin, right? But guess what? Not only does he expose our sin and sees our sin, but he washes us, boys and girls. He washes us. He wipes our sin away. And he makes us white as snow. And look at that. All of our sin is gone. And we can say that we are forgiven. Okay? And our heart is clean inside and out. And this is the way Jesus sees us, boys and girls. Once we come to him, he makes us white as snow. You see that? And our heart is pure and clean. But that can only happen if we come to Jesus. And so, boys and girls, thank you for joining me today. I love you guys. And remember, um, ask for forgiveness, boys and girls. Ask, ask Jesus to come into your heart and cleanse you of your sins. And... I hope that you guys have a good Sunday. Have a good rest of the week. I love you guys, and I can't wait to see you in person. Um, I'll see you next Sunday. Bye.